It makes someone's brain automatically go, Kiki's the bad guy. She turns around and insinuates that he's a predator to straight men. Makes herself the victim for the third time. Casper's just pouring all of his biscuits out to the kitchen counter. Hey guys, so today's a very different video. I want to talk about Tati Westbrook. This may seem like it's completely out of the blue. I've actually been thinking about this for a couple of weeks because I used to be a huge fan of Tati Westbrook. I used to watch every single video she came out with. Well, maybe except her PR hauls. I used to love the cute videos her and her husband made of their husband picks my makeup, husband buys my makeup, drugstore versus high end. Watched her for years. However, over the last three years, I had started to see a change in her behaviour. A lot of people probably won't remember the Emily Noel Kiki situation from 2018. So in 2018, Tati reviewed a bunch of products from Makeup Revolution, two of which were the Emily Noel collaborations. She was super, super excited about them in her PR haul. Makeup Revolution. <gasps> I've been told, yes, yes, yes. I have been hearing nothing but great things about these two palettes. She wasn't a fan of the palettes. She was very honest in her opinions. Blending of the chocolate shade was a little bit difficult. You can see there is like a little tiny patch that is kind of driving me nuts, to be honest. I didn't think too much of it. I was a bit shocked that she didn't like the bronzer or the blush in the Needs palette. I'm going into the shade Joy. And that is a little bit patchy. I'm not loving this palette because they are some of my absolute favorite bronzers and blushes I've ever tried. Um, if I could get them separate, I would. Because I used to love traveling with that when I was going to and from Malaysia in 2018. So I think it was a couple of days later that I saw a video from Kiki Chanel defending the Emily Noel collaboration. There's this video that was like, I don't know what the word is for it, but it was pretty biased. I couldn't believe it. I'm just trying to be so honest because if somebody said that about me, I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I quite liked Kiki's video. She has always been quite a straight talking to the point sort of girl. She swears like I do. She really, really loved two palettes and she really just wanted to defend them. And it's not the first time that she's done emergency reviews, which is what she called it. Basically what this video is, it's an emergency review. Kind of in defense of, so this is the Emily Edit palette, this is the, the Wants palette and the Needs palette. I didn't think a huge amount about it until Tati put up a video called I'm Done Being Quiet. She first of all takes a recording of Kiki mentioning YouTube collaborations are fair game. It's free reign. If you can review Kat Von D and say whatever you want, you should be able to say whatever you want about influencer collabs. I think everybody's fair game. If you collab with somebody, if you're coming out with a product, you're fair game for review. You are, you know, nobody's safe from an honest review. You just come up with a good product. If it's good enough, then you won't have anyone saying anything bad about you, you know? Nobody's safe from an honest review. And Kiki even mentions this in her video of when she's defending the palettes. Especially these palettes, like an influencer collaboration. And I've said before, influencers are not immune to negative reviews, but these, I've been using these palettes and I, I literally thought I was in a different world because these palettes are good. She emphasizes Kiki's words in the introduction of her video. Similar to what she did to James Charles further down the line, but I'll get to that in a minute. She then goes on to talk about Kiki's video and saying that this girl was swearing in the video, which she didn't appreciate. Um, there was profanity in the video, like that's how riled up this person got. Is she above Makeup Revolution? Is she working with somebody below her? I mean, what on fucking earth? I don't understand why people get so offended by swear words. It's English language. I say, shit and fuck and everything in my normal day-to-day -day life. From the tone and her facial expressions, it made it very clear that she was appalled that a smaller YouTuber would criticize her or her technique, etc. Was shocked, shocked. I didn't appreciate critique on my color choices, my application technique, and the way that it was insinuated that I am not a good makeup artist. She put 
apartment right here all over her lid, which did, those colors don't really go together. When this YouTuber, Kiki Chanel, had around less, I believe, than 200,000 subscribers and Tati was on the verge of hitting 5 million. Why are you so offended and why did you have to get so defensive towards someone so much younger, at least probably 15 years younger? But also, who she mentions Kiki's name and these horrible comments that she got not long after the video had aired. When that video went up is when everything tilted and when comments got really nasty. These comments came from such a toxic place that I disabled. That she was getting people targeting her, therefore that's why she turned it, the comments off. It makes someone's brain automatically go, Kiki's the bad guy. Similar to what she did with James Charles. When this all happened, it left a bad taste in my mouth because I didn't like that she was going after someone who was so much smaller than her. That's like James Charles going after Robert Welsh for criticising his makeup techniques in a React video or something like that. People are allowed to have their opinions. Patty made out that it was all because of money, that she was the one who put affiliate links in her defense of the palette and therefore that is why she defended it. And if you want to talk about someone being biased, look at who's using affiliate links. So to see someone drag me, my reputation, my creativity, my choices through the mud and then put an affiliate link for this in the top bar of their description box. When really she just loved the palette. She even mentions in the video, I like she's a tiny corner of the internet. She's only got a very small influence. I know I have a much smaller scope of influence, but she feels so strongly about these palettes being an amazing quality, really affordable for the price. You get huge mirrors, you get a huge range of colors. I apparently didn't appreciate that. So my point in telling you this before I go into the James Charles situation is that she's been manipulating her audience for years. Kiki actually apologize for that. Tati, all you had to do was not make a video about me and I would have looked like the bitch. There were 6,000 dislikes on your video. It doesn't matter if you have 10 followers, it doesn't matter if you have 5 million. Everybody gets hate comments. If you are on the internet in any capacity, you are going to get a hate comment. She doesn't like people talking bad about her. She doesn't like people criticizing her or her technique, etc. It'll be funny if you're on the internet, grow a fucking thick skin. If you're offended, you can just leave. I don't think anything super productive comes from crapping all over people. I have some people say some awful shit in my comments. I don't think it's worth blaming someone so young and someone who's so much smaller. And if you have a huge platform, it's very likely any video could get you that hate. Then goes to the James Charles situation. So there's been, I think, hundreds of videos of the James Charles Tassie Westbrook situation on YouTube. I'm not gonna go into the whole thing, but basically, in a nutshell, I haven't watched the 40 minutes again, because Jesus Christ, having to watch an hour, 40 minutes, that's a film, of the two Tatty videos, when I watched them twice at the time, I've watched them semi recently, so I, I just could not watch them again today. I apologize if I like miss a few things. In 2019, Tassie Westbrook put up a video called Bye Sister and again at the start of the video she put a nice montage of her and James on her channel and my bridal makeup which is what I am wearing right now. Oh. Um, I just wanted to congratulate you on almost a million on Instagram. I want to say huge congratulations to James Charles. If you have not checked his channel out on YouTube and you want to be inspired, he's a freaking teenager and he's like a genius with makeup. James Charles is the face of their holiday collection and I saw him do a really cool look and it just made me want to try this palette. We are going to be taking a first look at the new Morphe palette. Hello. So I'm so scared. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Like it? It looks so gorgeous. Do you like I it? I love it. Sorry, James. I'm on to another Morphe palette, but you guys can still use code James for 10% off this one. I'm the friend that's encouraging you guys to use code James for 10% off of savings. You can use anybody's code. Use, you know, James's code. I'm wearing my sister's apparel. You know, her promoting James and to use his affiliate link for Morphe, to get him more money, whatever. And then 
she turns around and insinuates that he's a predator to straight men. A situation that happened in Seattle at my birthday. You were talking in detail about things you wanted to do to the waiter. And when I said, James, he's straight, your response was, doesn't matter, I'm a celebrity. So freaking gross. In the video, she says that she was at a dinner party for her birthday. This is not, oh, someone told someone. This was at a dinner party at her birthday. He apparently said a few things about the waiter. If you're with your friends, first of all, can I just say that it's, especially if you're of that kind of 18, 19 year old age and you're single, I think there's nothing wrong with like looking at a guy or a girl and just going, oh, they're really, really fit. Like, I, I really want to ask for their number or I really want, should I flirt with them? Like, what should I do? Like, that's fucking normal. <laughs> 31 and I don't have the confidence to do that now, but that's pretty normal. He was talking about the waiter and Tati automatically turns around and goes, James, he's straight. Sorry, how do you know? Do you know him? You don't know that person. You do not know their sexual orientation. People can be bisexual. They can be straight. They can be gay. There's a huge spectrum. Just because you're straight does not mean that person's straight, or that person's straight. And it turns out, the guy was bi-curious. That night we went out to dinner with that, with Tati and James and her whole family, and we're in a restaurant. There was a cute boy across the restaurant that I kept making eye contact with, and that I was interested in. And the conversation of dating, for me and Jeffrey, both came up at the dinner table and we were talking about it for a very, very short period of time. The conversation never got inappropriate. Regardless, it turns out, the waiter made a video and he says he was bi curious. James Charles asked to kiss me. And I was very nervous because I had never done anything with a guy and I was bi curious. So I said yes. She insinuates James is a predator because he's interested in someone and she thinks he's straight. Can I just say it's really frustrating that straight people automatically just think everyone's fucking straight. I know there's a large population of straight people. But can we please get out of the mindset of just assuming everyone's fucking straight? Then he apparently turns around and says it doesn't matter because he's famous. And James in his response, his full response, not his weakling kind of little response, his proper response does advise that that's a joke. It's a joke loads of him and his influencer friends make all the time. Is it a good joke? No. I can see that as a joke. And even Felix... PewDiePie, he did a reaction video of the Tatty situation when it happened and even he said that just sounds like it's a joke. It doesn't sound like he's serious. Idea that, oh, I can do whatever I want because I'm a celebrity. Uh, I can also see that being said as a joke, okay? I don't know. It depends on the context. So, it was what I thought, at least from James' perspective, that it was just a joke. And apparently, she'd actually played into that joke previously. The I'm a celebrity thing is really incredibly frustrating to me because this is an inside joke between my friends and I that Tati has also participated in and she twisted this to be something far worse than what it is. Where we say I'm famous, not I'm a celebrity. And it's something that we don't say in public very often because without context, I get it. It looks and sounds really, really bad. Trust me. Um, literally, Famous is synonymous with anything good. So yeah, if my YouTube video does well one day, my friends will say, oh my God, James, you're so famous. She was aware of it. She could have just gone around and gone in this situation, like you're funny. She didn't. She used it to make out that he was a predator and it ruined this guy's career for almost a year. One year later, she then makes another video and makes herself the victim for the third time. Have you noticed that she's always the victim in all these situations? Anyone else frustrated by that? Me. In her last video that she's posted to her channel as of today, God knows if she's coming back to YouTube, she posted a video. In my mind, she was able to play the victim. Can I just say, in that video, she turns around and says that her and James Charles have spoken, they have forgiven each other. James Charles came to my LA home. We apologized to each other, forgave each other. He was going to be there to help film that video, but she said, no, I need to do this by myself. Since that night, James Charles has repeatedly said that he wanted to be beside me for this video. But I felt it was important that I do it alone. Basically, she dug the hole, she needs to fucking deal with it. 
Then further along in that video, she comes around and says that she stood behind everything she said in that video. But I did not lie in that video. I never called James Charles a pr I only privated my video at the request of YouTube. What? You insinuated the guy was a fucking predator and yet you stand behind it? Also, I'm not even gonna get into the whole that original video about James Charles, like 15 minutes of that was just product promotion. My product is selling like hotcakes. I just care about spending money to make my product as good as possible. These are, she's, this is an ad. <laughs> and it had a card in it where you could just buy her product. That looked bad. Especially considering in the Kiki situation, she turned around and said that she was the one using affiliate links and making money. In the newest video, she says that she was manipulated by Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. So sorry that I allowed myself to be poisoned and weaponized against you. I should have known better than to fall for their lies and manipulation. And that's why she made the video. That apparently Jeffree Star was extremely jealous of James Charles because he was on this um, upward trajectory. Initially dismissed it as jealousy because James Charles's career was on a rocket ship at the time. Can I be honest? I think she was also a little jealous. She may not have been as jealous as Jeffree Star, but I do think she was a little jealous too because he was getting a lot of attention. He was getting a lot of offers. In that video, she insinuates she was manipulated by Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star, They're whispering little things in her ear. I made it as a result of all of the poisonous lies that were fed to me by Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. And that's why she made the video because she wanted to get James Charles to put his phone down. I was trying to get you to put your phone down. It seems like the kind of thing where they could just call each other and resolve it. Would a phone call not have fucking worked? Why do these people have to take this shit to the internet? But do you notice that consistently throughout that video, she just makes herself the victim. It feels very manipulative, this whole thing. She makes herself the victim in every situation. In the Kiki situation, she said that everyone was giving her hate and basically it was Kiki's fault. This mothering figure to James Charles throughout all of his career. She and her husband were the ones that helped him activate like additional money for YouTube. He was making $90 a video and because of me and my husband, he was making 2,500 immediately from a switch being flipped. Helped him when he was being offered deals and going through the contracts. I negotiated another deal on the side for him that would have given him a million dollars the following week with a guarantee and with a higher percentage. And then in this one, she victimizes herself because she was manipulated and that's the reason why she went after James Charles. Even though she made it quite clear that it was to do with he had sold Sugar Bear hair vitamins over her vitamins. Didn't tell me right when he got back but after the little bit was posted on their launch day. That part felt super super shady to me. I also thought it was really strange because the reason that James always said that he couldn't promote Halo on his channel and really do like, you know, heavy endorsement was because he has a teenage audience and it would just be inappropriate. Even though there was actually clear times where he had promoted her product, but- I have to word the, okay, I forgot to say too. Hello. I'm going to a really important event later on tonight. No, my best no, friend- we are going to a really important event. Yes, this is true. And this is a very important launch to me because it is my best friend Tati. She's launching something new on Halo Beauty. Super proud of her. By the time this video is out, it'll already be up. So go check it out. Promo for Tati, love you the most. Who doesn't need a little beauty boost every now and then? Two of the following statements are real claims made by the original Halo Beauty booster supplement. Oh! Which are the real ah! ones? Can I just say I love you guys for putting a Halo question in there? I, I love you for that. Why? I just received my package from Halo Beauty. This is Tati's brand new brand. Um, I did not tell Tati that I was buying these, but I did pay for these myself because I just wanted to support her. And I'm so happy. Um, I know she's getting a lot of backlash on this, which is making me so mad because I know she's worked so hard on these for the past several years now. Congratulations, Tati. I love you literally so much. And I'm very, very proud of you and all your hard work. He felt like he had almost broken this trust with her. How much a specific decision he made that I perceived as betrayal. I'm not saying that there wasn't necessarily murmurings, etc. Fucking hell, we are not at high school. We are not at secondary school. We are not fucking children. We are adults in this situation. Can we please take responsibility for our own fucking faults and our own actions? 
is it really that difficult? And in this video as well, that she was trying to be a good role model for Jeffree Star. I knew that Jeffree had had a lot of drama in his past. And I thought I could be a good example for him. I'm an imperfect person. Who made you this perfect halo? Get it, halo you. Who made her the best beauty guru on YouTube? The person that never says a bad word about anybody, is the person that everyone should look up to. Who the fuck put her on that pedestal? She's a human being at the end of the day. She can make mistakes, she can have faults. Which fuck me, does she not take any accountability for her fucking faults? By the way, this is not a me kissing James Charles's ass. I literally never watch him. Like I said, this is because I have been a long-standing fan of Tati Westbrook. And over the last three years, I've just seen so much behaviour that I just don't agree with. And she constantly in her videos seems like she's putting her nose up at people. I see through the bullshit now. Because at the end of the day, she is a master manipulator. She makes out that Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star were the master manipulators. And I'm not saying Jeffree Star isn't, trust me. But she is a wolf in sheep's clothing. The last thing I just want to touch on is the lawsuit. I'm not going to fully get into it because a lot of it is just allegations. It's all got to still go through the courts. She's already countersued the person. But her and her husband's business partner, Halo Beauty, has created a lawsuit against her and her husband. In his words, or around about his words, I'm paraphrasing. Her and her husband agreed to give him 50% of the company. Any products, cosmetic, skincare, etc. Let's be under the Halo Beauty. Alleges that Tati and her husband James did a whole lot of bad stuff. The legal complaint acquired by Without a Crystal Ball said, Verified complaint with direct and derivative causes for a breach of fiduciary duty, negligence, gross negligence, fraudulent inducement, false promise, breach of contract, breach of the duty of good faith and fair dealing, promissory estoppel, unjust enrichment, aiding and abetting breaches of fiduciary duties, aiding and abetting the breach of the duty of good faith and fair dealing, conversion. Jury trial demanded. Brooks would commit to use Halo Beauty as Miss Westbrook's umbrella brand for all her beauty launches. Cosmetics, skincare, fragrance, all of Tati Westbrook's beauty products. For Halo Beauty becoming Miss Westbrook's exclusive channel for all things beauty. Mr. Snowson agreed to give up his 50% stake and managing membership in the Nutraceuticals business in exchange for one third of the ownership of the all new, all inclusive brand. This would make sure that everything sold through Halo Beauty would give him a profit. However, they found some sort of loophole Although it doesn't look like a legal lo loophole from what I've read in the lawsuit anyway. They created a secondary brand, Tatty Beauty. Because the eyeshadow palette and makeup, puff, sponges, whatever, were sold under Tatty Beauty, their business partner was not able to receive any monetary gain. Therefore, I guess he was pretty salty. If that is the case, that's really bad. And considering her husband is a pretty, like, well-off businessman or whatever, I mean, look at the size of the ring that she has. And her house, her house, like, from the videos that I used to watch, looked fucking massive. She has filed a counter suit against this person, saying that it's defamatory, and that nothing he says was true, that he's got no proof. The thing that I don't understand, why did she liquidate all her assets in October? Uh, October 9th, 2020, defendant James Westbrook distributed hundreds of thousands of dollars to the members of Halo Beauty Partners LLC, including substantial sums for his own benefit. The distribution was wrongful because it was made without the authorization of all of the member managers as required by the party's agreements and practices. It makes them look really fucking guilty. And to be honest, I don't trust them anyone. It looks fucking dodgy. I'm not a business person, but I don't understand why you would liquidate your assets unless you're selling the company. To round off this video, considering this has probably been pretty long, as an ex-fan of Tati Westbrook, I'm really disappointed in who she's become over the last couple of years. She's become someone who bullies smaller channels, who insinuates someone is a predator with no evidence, who victimises herself in every situation. She's become extremely untrustworthy. So if she ever comes back to YouTube, I would take everything she says with a pinch of salt. That's just my opinion. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Subscribe if you like it. I'm gonna cover the Swoop Mikey situation next week, considering I've left it about a month and Mikey has started to come back to Instagram without saying anything. If I feel there is a topic I would like to speak on, I'm gonna try and do one of these videos once a week, but 
I'm not promising. I'm still going to be doing my makeup content, my style content, all that kind of stuff. So if you like that, please subscribe. And I hope to see you all in the next video, guys. Have a good day. Bye.